Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we gather before God remembering the cross in sorrow and shame. We seek his forgiveness, strength, and mercy. We remember the day of our Savior's death. We mourn and struggle to understand the depth of Christ's love, that he should suffer and die in our place. Father, our hearts are heavy as we gathered in the name of Christ, bearing witness to the terror of his crucifixion, knowing full well that we are guilty sinners in need of your forgiveness, life, and salvation. At times we have failed to strive against evil in the world. At times we have denied our Lord. times we have betrayed our Lord. Upon this your confession, I, as an ordained servant of the crucified Christ, announce his grace and mercy to you, and in the stead and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. We join in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever felt alone, all alone? At times, each of us has felt at least a, a bit of this feeling. Perhaps we were headed off to college or a new school, totally new situation for us. We didn't know anyone who was there, what our teacher would be like. Maybe we were headed off to our first job or perhaps a new job again. Didn't know anyone who was there or what we would be doing, how those people would treat us. We've all definitely felt alone if we've lost a loved one. Could be a child, could be a spouse. If we've gone through a divorce, we felt alone. But were we truly all alone? 
None of us were truly all alone if we were a Christian. God was with us in some way, and he had always placed people around us. Maybe we didn't notice them at the time, but they were there, and in some way they cared for us. If we want to look at all alone, there's only one direction we can turn, and that's to the cross. That was all alone. Only Jesus on that cross was all alone. Even his Father and the heavenly angels had to stand back while Jesus hung there in our place. His mother Mary and John, the disciple he loved, were standing there at his feet. But what could they do? Jesus had to face everything for our sins all alone. It's Good Friday, and it's our sad business today to watch Jesus, our Savior, give up his life for us on the cross. We know why Jesus is hanging there. He's not guilty He's there because he's the only one who can pay the debt that you and I own. He's not just our suffering Savior. He's also the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So here we are. Our chancel area is stripped almost bare of its furnishings. The readings we'll hear later are ugly and vivid not pleasant reviewing what Jesus endured for us, but consider the suffering Jesus faced alone. It was certainly far worse for him. What happened since last evening, since Jesus transformed the Passover into the Last Supper and Holy Communion? Matthew chapter 26 tells us, Then Jesus went with his disciples to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and two of the sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. He said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup be taken away from me. Yet, not as I desire, but rather as you will. Jesus knew exactly what would happen to him that night and the next day. All alone, he would face our Heavenly Father's wrath because of our sins. He would endure a number of unjust trials. He would be whipped. He would be mocked. A crown of thorns would be brutally thrust upon his head. And then he would be nailed to a cross. He'd endure the very painful death that was reserved for only the worst of criminals. Going ahead, Jesus knew all that would happen to him, and it made him shudder. In that reading I just read to you, he prayed that it might be accomplished some other way, if it was at all possible. But he knew that debt had to be paid, He knew none of us could pay on our own. He knew he had to pay it in our place. The careless things that you and I say, the intentional, harmful, angerful things that you and I say and do cost Jesus dearly. Faithfully to this point, for 33 years, Jesus had carried out our Heavenly Father's rescue mission. But even now, he humbly submitted himself to our Heavenly Father's plans. We know very well what happened next, and if not, we'll hear it in a few moments. After Jesus finished praying, Judas led a group of jealous religious leaders to Gethsemane. Greedy Judas, for 30 silver coins, had agreed to hand over Jesus to them. How ugly greed and jealousy can be. Judas abandoned his only friend. These religious leaders finally found an opportunity to get away with the one they hated so much. Of all people, those Jewish leaders who were expert in the scriptures should have known that Jesus was 
the long-awaited Messiah. If they only listened to him and watched what he did and compared it to what the prophets had said, they would have known he was the one they should have welcomed with open arms. But instead, the, they were jealous of the crowds that Jesus had attracted. They envied the things that Jesus could do, and they were afraid that if Jesus continued, even more people would follow him. No one would want to come to them for anything, and they'd lose all their influential positions. Because of their fear, they abandoned Jesus. We're now told, those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and elders had assembled. These jealous religious leaders wanted everything to look legal. But if you look closely, you know it was illegal to put anyone on trial during the night. But remember what happened on Palm Sunday. The crowds had greeted Jesus with open arms. They took the trial at night so that the crowds were not aware of what was happening. They didn't want the crowd to turn on them. So how many illegal trials did Jesus have to endure? John chapter 18 tells us, The Jewish officials bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. High priest was supposed to be a lifetime job. Then Jesus was sent to Caiaphas and the Jewish council of the elders. This group could pronounce a sentence of death on him, but they couldn't execute anyone. The Romans had the final say. They had to have Pilate pronounce the sentence of death on Jesus. So now Jesus was sent to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Luke chapter 23 tells us, Then the whole assembly arose and led him off to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man subverting our nation. He opposes the paying of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Christ, a king. Now, Pilate would not have killed Jesus for breaking any Jewish religious laws. Pilate and these Jewish leaders had butted heads in the past, and they didn't like each other. They had fought fiercely. That meant the Jewish religious leaders had to find a, a reason, a legal loophole, some excuse for Pilate to condemn Jesus to death. If they could prove that Jesus was a king and was opposed to the Roman Caesar, they might force Pilate to do what they wanted. That's why Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And we remember Jesus said, I am. But then Jesus added, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. Pilate knew exactly what was going on. He knew these religious leaders were jealous of Jesus and were trying to manipulate him. They were not his friend. When they shouted, we have no king but Caesar, he knew they were only trying to force him to do what was wrong. Listen to the readings later on. You'll see that Pilate tried to do everything that he could in his power to release Jesus and not have him crucified. He had Jesus whipped, hoping that would satisfy these angry men. He tried to have Herod Antipas pronounce the sentence on Jesus. See, Jesus was from Galilee. This was outside his jurisdiction. He needs to decide. He even offered a trade. Matthew 27, verses 17 and 18 tell us, Which one do you want to release to you, Barabbas, a known insurrectionist, or Jesus, who's called Christ, for he knew it was out of envy they had handed Jesus over to him. Pilate knew Jesus was innocent. In Luke chapter 23, we are told, for the third time he spoke to these religious leaders, he said, what crime has this man committed? I have found no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. Listen to the readings. We know the leaders 
stirred up the crowd, and we know how Pilate caved in. Afraid that there might be an uprising if he didn't give in, Pilate gave in. If there was a riot and Caesar in Rome heard about it, then Caesar might relieve Pilate of his position and might even have him killed. So, washing his hands of Jesus, Pilate abandoned him and even pronounced the sentence of death on him. Count the number of people who deserted Jesus. First, there were the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane who ran. Judas betrayed him. The Jewish religious leaders discarded the Messiah out of jealousy and fear. The Roman rulers played with him and tossed him to the side as they argued among themselves. Even our Heavenly Father and the holy angels had to stand to the side while Jesus hung there in our place. All alone, Jesus paid the debt that you and I owe. There is only one person who stayed true during the trials and crucifixion, and that's Jesus. He stood true to us. He loves us that much. In Jesus' name. So. Let us pray. We implore you, O Lord, that your abundant blessing may be upon your people who have held the passion and death of your Son in devout remembrance, that we may receive your pardon and the gift of your comfort, and may increase in faith and take hold of eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.